Today we're here with Alex Andorra, who has a background in social sciences, has been a PyMC core developer for many, many years, and is part of the founding team of PyMC Labs. Thanks for being here, Alex. Yeah, thanks a lot. That's a pleasure. I'm happy that we've added that fake background. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Modern technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so curious, why did you become a Bayesian? Yeah, so it's a good question. I thought you knew that, but OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good to check. No, so as you were saying, I, I, in a previous life, I was doing political science and electoral forecasting in particular. And I just like frequentist methods didn't work with that because survey data is extremely messy. Uh, it's very noisy and it's, you don't have a lot and it's very noisy. So I was stuck basically with the frequentist background and I looked around to how I could solve that. And that's how I encountered Bayesian stats and PyMC at the same time. Mm. And um, to me, that was checking all the boxes because that allowed me to take into account the noisiness of the data to estimate uncertainty, which is extremely important in electoral forecasting because you don't want just one point estimate, but you want to estimate the uncertainty and uh, also because of coalitions of parties that can mean different realities, even though you can have the same point estimates. Um, so there was that, and also hierarchical models, extremely important in electoral forecasting because, again, you don't have a lot of data, but you have a lot of groups, so like age groups, ethnicities, um, socioeconomic status, stuff like that. So instead of having just, you know, different models for different people, you can just have everything in a big model and share information between the different groups. And that was really like the, the holy trinity for me that won me over to base. Mm, interesting. And how did you then get started with Bayes? Uh, well, I just started reading. I think the first book I read was the one from Osvaldo Martin. Mm. Um, and, but his first book, so because that's, it's been a while now. It was 2016. So, uh, and that's, that's how I started. That's how I discovered PyMC. And then the second book I read was Statistical Rethinking by Richard McElroy. Mm. Again, the first edition. <laughs> and uh, then I started, I was like, huh, the book is in R, which I don't like. And I was learning Python and PyMC at the time. So I thought that was a good excuse to port the book to PyMC, basically. And so that's how we started that effort to poured the whole code of the book and the exercises also to PyMC, and that, that really helped a lot. And then also working on my own electoral forecasting models, that, that helped a lot. And, and then afterwards, basically seeing some stuff in the PyMC package, and I was using the multivariate normal distribution a lot. So that meant um, like the LKJ Koleski decomposition, which was uh, an API that was hard to understand for users. So including for me. And so I was like, huh, that'd be cool if we implemented, like uh, improved that. So that's what I did different pull requests. And basically that's how um, I think, I think the guy who invited me to the team was Thomas Vicky. I don't know if you know, oh. yeah. I don't know, if you know him, but yeah, yeah. pretty cool guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like that's how I integrated the, the PyMC core team. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And what I really like about that story and what I also always try and tell people is to try and really not just read material, but do something with it, like a small project, ideally is something which contributes back to the community like you did with that port, right? Um, and if I remember correctly, there was also a similar motivation for launching your extremely popular podcast, Learn Bayesian Statistics, right? True, true. Even though I would say the motivation for the podcast was a bit more selfish, uh, it's just that I love learning with podcasts. I listen to a ton of podcasts. And at the time, I was learning Python and listening to a ton of podcasts on Python. And I was looking for a podcast about Bayes. I was like, oh, that I don't seem to be seeing any. So maybe I should just start one. And hmm. I know that at the time, I didn't really care if people would listen or not, because I was like, eh, that's a good excuse for me to reach out to cool people from the field and just like have the opportunity to interview them for one hour. Um, which they would probably not do if I was just, you know, some random dude from the internet. Um, and so yeah, <laughs> that's how that started. And I liked also the idea that I would be learning with the podcast. So mm. because when I started the podcast, 
in September 2019. I think if you go back to those episodes, you can really hear that there is a ton of stuff I don't know that now now I know, but I really learned throughout the podcast. So yeah. if you listen from episode zero, I think you can see my um, expertise learning curve going up, yeah. uh, which I found to be a cool experiment and kind of like a learning diary, but I don't like to write, so I prefer to talk. So that's yeah. why I did that. I guess it's not specified in learning based statistics who is learning based statistics. Sounds exactly. like it was you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, implicitly it was. I was, <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah. But no, that's that's awesome because it turns out lots of people want to learn based stats. And um, that's awesome. Like now the podcast is quite established and lots of people listen to it to yeah. actually learn based stats, which is, which is really awesome. So I'm really happy about that because in the end now I am one of the people who contribute to their learning and to be sure, I'm not claiming that I know everything about that. Uh, we're at the PMC Labs retreat right now, and uh, all the people in the room are smarter than me, so I <laughs> definitely learn all the time. But uh, that's cool to be able to, yeah, uh, on my now, to be able to also contribute back and how people learn. Mm, yeah. And if you look at PMC today, the software package, mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? And is there anything that you're excited about in terms of like the future or maybe where you think the, the path that the future should take? Yeah, I'm really excited about the package because I think that Bayesian stats is getting more popular. Of course, that could just be my sampling bias, but um, I see more and more people using it. So that's really awesome. I think there are at least two avenues uh, where we will expand and I think I'm going to have a big impact on that. The first one being causal inference. Mm -hmm. um, not really because it's really something new for us. I think actually the whole causal inference framework is something we've been working on since we started with Bayes, basically because the generative modeling idea is really core to Bayesian yeah. modeling and forward sampling, so simulating data from the model um, before seeing the actual data, so prior sampling and afterwards posterior predictive sampling. Once you've seen the data, what does that mean about future data that you could have observed or could observe? That's exactly what if analysis, right? But um, I'm happy to see that basically the, the two frameworks are basically merging um, the idea of causal inference, the concepts and Bayesian sets because that's really, that works amazing out of the box. And I think another avenue is time series mm. uh, because time series are still very hard uh, to implement. I think, I mean, these are hard models, but I kind of feel like they are still harder to implement than, than they need to be. Mm. Um, and yeah, all these time series models, now they are being starting to be way easier with the different methods we have in the core package, but also the experimental package. And uh, what's the name of the new one? PyMC State Space. PyMC State Jesse Space. Jesse Grabowski. Exactly. Like that work is amazing because mm. state space models are very intimidating because it's a lot of math, yeah. but like the structure is not that hard to understand. So it's very modular. You, exactly. Yeah. So again, this idea of building blocks, you know, that you talk about a lot where Bayesian stats is basically Lego blocks that you mm. um, assemble. I think time series are really amenable to that. And so that, that would be something where I think that will help adoption of Bayesian stats and also Gaussian processes because Gaussian processes are just awesome. Yeah. Uh, but they are harder mathematically, but already we're making that easier with the GP package and the different decompositions we have, uh -huh. uh, stuff like that. And is there anything that you know, or maybe just discovered and think that not enough people use us are aware of and that they maybe should look into if you have a tip for them. So you mean a feature of PyMC? For example. Yeah. Um, I would say the zero sum normal. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, because uh, I've worked a lot on it because um, I didn't understand it. So um, I had the chance to work uh, on it with the father of the distribution, uh, Adrian Zabelt, to name him. 
Um, so I talked with him a lot at last week, last year's retreat, uh, this year's retreat also, I talked with him a lot, um, discovering and still learning a lot about the zero sum normal. And also I have the episode 74, I think of my podcast where I interview Adrian and why he came up with the zero sum normal and mm. also all his work on NetPy. So the, um, MCMC implementation he has in, in Rust and Numba. Uh, so I recommend listeners to listen to that and zero sum normal why i think it's awesome is because if you're doing regression with categorical predictors chances are you need to use the zero sum normal and you're not and probably your model is over parameterized what does that mean it's not bad per se i mean it can run and nuts is pretty robust so it should be okay but that mm. means your model is running more um, longer than it could be it mm. could run much faster much more efficiently and zero sum normal fixes all that and also if you're using multinomial models or binomial models instead of using pivoting which is always hard to interpret and implement just use zero sum normal it's like you're using a normal distribution but just zero sum normal and that's gonna change everything and fix the, the problem you've been having so to me yeah, I, I would recommend looking into that because it's just one distribution that's going to fix a lot of your problems. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that we didn't have that before. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how I was living without it. Yeah. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's, and it's a very interesting distribution because it, it looks so simple. It's just hmm. a normal distribution which is constrained to sum to zero. Well, it sounds very simple, but actually it's very, it, mathematically it's very interesting. Um, and it has a lot of consequences for hierarchical models, for instance, also. So we're still, we're still discovering a lot of features of zero sum normal, which are very cool and we didn't know before. And so that's also something I really love about our work and what we do at labs and at PyMC in general is that, uh, each year when I, at the retreat, when I look back at last year's models mm. that they were doing, I'm like, oh my God, that was that was bad. Uh, <laughs> and, and I love that because if, you know, your previous models are something where you're, you think it's bad, that means you've progressed a lot. And so I hope that next year at the retreat, I'll be able to say that mm, this year's models now have been surpassed by next year's model and that next year's models are going to be my best ever. And in a few years, they're going to be my worst ever. Right. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for all the work you do in the community, the Learning Basin Statistics podcast, which was very inspiring to me, and uh, for chatting with us today. Yeah, I mean, no, oh, thank you for having me here. Thank you for uh, inviting me in the community. And you've been doing that work for way longer than me. And uh, I think it's it's really awesome what you've what you've done with all the all the all the community, and that you're still doing that every day. I can attest. <laughs> I appreciate that.